मूर्ति भेद विभागिने सदाशिव शंकराचार्य मध्य स्मदाचार्य वंदे गुरु परंपरा व्यासेन कृतिता पुराण विना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतावर्षी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी भगवत ब्रह्मेन्द्र रुद्र मरुत स्वंति दिव्य स्तव वेदसांगपदक्रमोपनिषदर्गायवस्थित तेन मनसा ुरासुरगणाधेवाय तस्म श्री भगवान वाच काम ईश क्रोध ईश 
Arjun has asked the question, Anichan Purushaha Kena Prayuktaha Papam Charati. This is the main question was asked. Anichanapi, even though that person is not desired, but still, Kena Prayukteha, impelled by whom this person committed Papam and somebody forcefully pushed into committed Papa. So for that, Bhagavan has said, person is committed Papa because there is something sitting in the person and the name of that is Eshakamaha, Eshakrodha, the desire and anger who are sitting inside the person are born out of Rajaguna and this Kamaha and Krodha consider as a great eater, Mahashanaha, Never say no. And Krodaha Mahapapma. This Krodaha anger consider is a great sinner. That's why Bhagavan says you, su you should consider a desire, binding desire which is sitting inside you and anger which is inside you. You should consider as an enemy. 
and why we are considering both of them. We can take both. In second chapter, Bhagavan has taken Krodaha and here Bhagavan has taken Kama. But both are, both are we can say, is children of Ragadvesha or desire. And Bhagavan says, why they are considered as an enemy? Because they are covered. They can cover our Viveka Shakti, our discrimination power. Bhagavan says, Tena idam avrutam, Tena kamena, or we can say, Tena krodena idam, Viveka Shakti avrutam. Our discrimination power is uh, uh, covered, or we can say, achadita. And three types we can say, dhubena vahnihi avriyate, adarshaha malena avriyate, and garbaha urbena avruttaha or avriyate. Same way, our kama or krodha can also cover our vivekshat. And again, Bhagavan says his kama and krodha consider enemy only for one who are people are wise people, not for all. He says, etena, etena kamena, or etena krodhena, avrutam gnanam. So here, whenever gnanam comes, the meaning is viveksha, discrimination power. That's why Bhagavan says, gnani naha, nitya verina. This kama is considered always, for the old time, is a enemy of Gnani, Natu Murka, Shankara is written, and he says this Etena, means Kama Rupena, this Kama is like an Analam. Analam means fire, and Anal never say enough, Dushpurena. Keep on adding ghee, it never says no, same way whatever desire of it, you fulfilled, but it never says no. That's why for Gnani, is considered is a always enemy. And where do this are staying? So Bhagavan says, Indriyani, this Kama and Krodha are location of Kama Krodha is Indriyani, senses, manaha, mind, good thinking, intellect, asya kamasya, asya krodhasya, adhishthanam, uchyate. They are considered as a location of all mano buddhi and indriyani. And what this karma does, so Bhagavan says, Eshaha. Eshaha kamaha eitehi. With the help of this, means with the help of indri, with the help of mind, and with the help of our intellect, this kamaha or krodaha vimohayati. He deludes the person. And how they inam nanam avrutya again he just covered the discrimination of they inam a person who is sitting inside. And now last three verses in this third chapter of Gita, we say whenever person is sick, you know, then they go to doctor and seek doctor some treatment. Then doctor gives two type of uh, treatment. One is called uh, Quick, for quick relief, if person has too much fear, fever, then doctor gives even an antibiotic plus paracetamol something, the person doesn't feel that fever. It's called symptomatical relief. And another doctor gives is antibiotic. So whatever infection, whatever is there, goes permanently. Same way here Bhagavan is given symptomatically relief. And if you would to send, send out our karma and krodha permanently, then in last two verses, Bhagavan has given permanent relief of this. The first one, this one we are seeing, 41 verse, this is called symptomatic relief from varinam, karma and krodha. Tasmat, here again Bhagavan is used, tasmat. Therefore, this gnanam, is covered by Kamaha and Krodaha. That's why, therefore, Adu means in the beginning only Indriyani. This whole Indriya, mind, and intellect, Yamya. 
one has to under control. And Bhagavan says, Enam means here, Enam means Kama, which is in the form of Gnana, Vijnana, and Varshanam, which is destroyer of our Jnana and Vijnana. Bhagavan says, He is a Papanu. He is a, in the form of Papa, sin, Rajahi. You should give up. Here, Bhagavan didn't say, just destroy, but Rajahi. The meaning of Rajahi means you should give up. So now if we see, so we have seen the meaning of Bharata Shabha. He Bharata Shabha, the smart, therefore, this karma and krodha are highly dangerous. Therefore, tvam adho eva. In the beginning only, indriyani adho niyamya, having control these all three locations of karma krodha, and enam means kamam, nana vignana nashanam, which is in the form of papa, prajahi. You should give up. So Bharatar Shabha, we have seen the meaning. Bharatar Shabha means Bharat Kulana Madhye Rushabha Eva Rushabha. So like Bulok, we can immediately, we can say this is among all cow, the group of cows, this is the Bulak. Same way all Duryodhana and all are moving. Even if Arjuna goes, we can say this is Arjuna only. That much his personality was, you know, stand out, standing outside. So it's called Bharatar Shabha. So Bhagavan says, He Bharatar Shabha. The smart means therefore, the meaning of therefore, this is Kama and Krodha is highly dangerous. Kama and Krodha consider as a inimical. That's why what you have to do, Tvam means you, Adav in the beginning only, Indri, Indriyani, Niyamya. So having control of senses, and how come I can control my senses? So it is given in three ways, which is given in Tattva Bodha. It is very famous everywhere in Viveka Chudamani. So first method is called Dhamaha. Second method is called Shamaha. And last one is called Discrimination Power or Wisdom. The first dhamma means we can give proper direction to our own sense organs. And the dhamma means there is a no any separation, but we can give proper channel. So suppose we can say no admission without permission and we should try out what are coming through our senses. We are able to filter it out, whether it is good for our mind whether it is not good for mind, it is called filter. And we can tell our senses, my mind is not a best paper basket. Unhealthy objects should not allow to enter. So actually, Here only I have written this, our negativity, our anger, our jealousy, always come out through senses. Unknowingly, whether we like or we don't like, but our senses always reflects what is going in our side, our in mind. So, Dhamma means even sense objects should not come through senses. At the same time, whatever our negative emotion should not come out through senses and which can hurt other person. So I have just written here, if anger is there, means in our mind, krodha is there, then what are the you know, condition of our sense organs? We say our eye becomes red. Even we would like to speak, we cannot speak properly. We can start anything. And sometimes somebody's skin also becomes red. Same way, if we are over attached, if raga is there, then how can we, you know, make out if this person is too much attachment? So, 
tears come out from the eyes. We cannot hear something, whatever. If somebody is to whom we are attached, if person starts talking something not good about that person, we cannot about to hear. And tongue always speaks good for that person. And I have written for Arjuna, Siddhanti Mamagatra. So our Arjuna is a classical example of Raga with Bhishma and Drona. And if jealousy, if we have, then our ear would like to hear a bitter word from that person with whom we are jealous. Then we are keep saying the wrong thing for that person. So these are the symptoms of our negativity should not come out. So what should we do? I just for Niyamya. So what can we do for Niyamya? So I have written, first thing is we should be a self honest with ourselves. We should know we are jealous. We should know we have hatred for someone. Then only we can do some treatment. If patient goes to doctor and if say I have some problem, then we can do treatment. Same way, if we know these are the problems in my mind, then only we can do something. So self-honesty is the first. And if anger is there, then how can we niyam? How can we control our anger? So I have just written, we should not express externally. Our anger should not be expressed externally. And how we can stop? So I have written, we should leave the place. If we know, now it is something, you know, is like a, mm, simmering inside my heart. And if we have a volcano, it is better. We can leave the place, but we should not start argument, what argument. And here I have written, give the suggestion. There are many words I used to say. If we, you know, our subconscious mind is very sharp. So if every day before come out from the bed, if we give the word Shanta, we can tell our mind for today only, if some hot discussion start, you have to say Shanta, Shanta, Shanta. So if we keep on telling our mind, one day will come when we know this is situation, something is not good. And immediately that word starts from the not to argue. It's called new separation. There are many words. We can say shanta, then we can say even whatever we like. In Puja Swamiji used to tell whatever anger in our mind, we should write it down. We, we need not to show anyone, but we have to write it down. In whatever words we would like to use, we can use and then burn it out. Then we have to burn. Even there are many other, in you know, there is a no population. We have to go there and we have to shout loudly. Whatever anger should come out, but even our that anger should not remain inside. It harms us. If it goes out, then it harms others. So, in, in last one, that pillow, no? By punching, no? That what was their wrestler? They are using one pillow for doing what they want. Punching bag. We have to keep whenever anger comes, we start punching on that pillow. Everything, when settled down, the anger will go. And this jealousy, it is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Try to find out a good quality. Any person is not only have, you know, this negative guna. Each and every person is combination of both. So virtue also and some negativity also. So with whom we are jealous, we have to find out who is the good quality. Even hatred, we had someone, we have to find out there must be some good quality. So one day, you know, before maybe five to six months, here we people used to follow this Chaturmasa. In Chaturmasa in rainy season, they ask me, give me some, you know, niyama. 
So we can follow for four and a half months during rainy season. So I have given all of them here in four months. To, because I know where there is in, in family fight with whom and everything. So I have to ask them each and every person with whom you are not good in relationship. Try to write every day what is the good qualities. So every day you have to write this is the good quality of the person. This is the good quality of person. One day you will develop love for that person. Because otherwise living in same family every day fighting the mind how can we be so this is called the Pratipaksha Bhav. Technical name is Pratipaksha Bhav. But still, they write also, but again, fight also. <laughs> and I have written total surrender to Ishwara, and we can offer our all negative tendency to Ishwara. And what I have told that all the story, that all lady story, uh, that old lady story who has given all his dust is offering to Ishwara. So what negativity is nothing but dust only. This all impurities where we can offer only one place. We cannot throw on any person. We can offer Ishwara. So these are my negativities. That's why self honesty is necessary. Otherwise, I am we start justified our all negativity. This person is done. That's why I'm others. I'm very good. So whatever that person do, let them do. But there should be no negative. So this is also, and last when I have written, karma yoga is also helped. So whatever happening in our life is nothing but Ishwara's blessing. Ishwara would like to shape our life in a such a way so we can more near to Ishwara. So if we keep on mind, then our senses, our mind, May be peaceful. So this is called Damaha. Now Shamaha. This Shamaha, so here I have written, but Shamaha I have written here. Shama is called Manaha Nigraha. Niyamya, our mind. So the Shamaha is not suppress our mind. Mano Nigraha did not to control our mind. But Mano Nikraha means again giving proper direction to our mind. And how can we give proper direction? So I have just written some few points. We can tell our mind Ati Sarvam Varjya. Whatever too much, even senses would like to do more and more, we can say no to them. So, if I would like to see more and more something in TV, laptop, or anything mobile, we can say no. Same way, ear, nose, touch, and taste. Ati sarvam varjyam. And the second thing, our mind always worried about future. What will happen to me in future? Mind is always tensed in present. Right now, I don't hear what will happen in present, present tense. And in past, because of past, we have grief. We have our own guilt and hurt. So how to come out from this? So that's why I have, I think, discussed, I think in meditation only, there are the three lines, only three sentences of prayer. And this sentence prayer is, O oh Ishwara, First, if you want, I will give. But first line is, O oh Ishwara, give me the strength so I can accept gracefully what cannot be changed. This is the first line. Second line is, O oh Ishwara, give me the strength so I can change gracefully what can be changed. And third one is, O oh Ishwara, give me the wisdom. So I can know what can be changed, what can not be changed. And generally, we would like to change the people. We would like to change the situation. Everything we would like to change, it is not in our head. Even we cannot change our past, then there is a no need of mourning. We should accept. 
So this, even our birth, our education, our partner, our past, we cannot change. So if we can say, oh Ishwara, grace me or bless me so I can accept everything, whatever I have done in my past. Otherwise, mind is no peaceful. And the second one, oh Ishwara, give me the strength so I can change what can be changed. Only one thing can be changed in our self -worthy. We cannot change person. So only we have to change. And what is the meaning of change? Change is nothing but to accept people. Nothing else. I am changing means I start accepting the people as they are. Many times I have shared with many people. And this is Puja Swamiji's word. He said in the at the age of 40, maybe 32, because Swami took sannyasa at the age of 32. So having learned all Vedanta, Swamiji was very inspiration. Okay, let me give lectures to all you know mankind. So each and every people, and having listened this Vedanta, let the all people change. Let them life change. Because Vedanta is so wonderful. We are not body, we are not mind. So we keep on giving the Gnani Yagna and he starts taking this three years means long term courses. So he has noticed even after taking long term course and even after taking this Gyana Yagna, Swami has noticed nobody is changing. So in their behavior, nobody is changing. And Swami says, I was sometimes shocked. First, he says, I have doubt myself. My teaching is not proper. Why they are not changing? Then slowly Swami says, I understood. I cannot change the person. Then I will start to accept the people as they are. Whatever their lifestyle, whatever their you know behavior pattern, whatever their thought process, I never ask to change them. I say this is good, this is bad, but I never ask in person you change. Because if person would like to change, automatically that person will change. But because of my advice, because of my teaching, it is not necessary everybody needs to change. This change, Swami says, keeps change in my mind. So I have changed my mind. I never change the people. It is called total acceptance. We should accept the person also. We should accept the situation. Why this is happening in my life? This why should go because we always think of our life. If we go some slum area, if we go somewhere, at that time we we can think ourselves we are so blessed. We have too much. Like in slum area, children they don't have anything compared to them. We are very blessed. So more we compare with such, then we think we are blessed. So acceptance to keep our mind always quiet. And fourth, I have written the same thing. We need a prayerful mind. And we try to see the grace of Ishwara everywhere in our life. Sometimes we say in past how much I have gone through some pain and something. But after some years, no, if we look back, and if we consider, if such episode won't come in my life, then I won't be like this. So more and more, if we think, we can accept the Ishwara's grace. It says, I have always used to tell, when there is a hit, then is the growth. Not growth, but I can say maturity. Paripakwa. Like uh, all fruits need some heat to become a mature paripakva. Same way, our heart, our mind are not mature. Bhagwan would like to make it mature. So what Bhagwan can do? So Bhagwan gives some situation where we feel heat. We can and we cannot endure such situation. But if we can accept this situation gracefully, then we are enough mature. 
So more and more, if we accept we whatever have gone in our past, then we are more and more mature. So in this way, we can see the Ishwara's grace in our life. And this is called Shama. So Bhagavan is Indriyani Adho Niyamya Bharadarsha. So we can tell our mind like how to con not control, but how can we give proper direction to mind? How can we give proper direction to even our senses? And how can we give proper direction to buddhi? Because manna buddhi asya dhishthana uchyate. So we have to take proper care only. So, and last one, what I have written, third one is Viveka Shakti. The Viveka Shakti means our discrimination power. We can tell to our mind, limited thing cannot give eternal happiness. Because we are seeking eternal happiness from limited object. We are seeking happiness from, you know, limited relationship. Cannot give eternal happiness. And second thing, limited plus limited. Only limited only. What I have told the story. If boy and girl gets married, both have limited knowledge. Both are apurna. Apurna plus apurna cannot be apurna. More problems. So apurna only. And last thing, which is given in Patopanishad, Vitena Manushya Vitatarpani. Whatever we provided money to person, he cannot be satisfied. This is told by our Najiketa, Vitena Tarpani Yona Manushya. So by making our this senses, mind and buddhi like this, enam means this karma, gnana vignana nashan. So this is the adjective used for karma or krodha. Which type of karma krodha? The one who is a destroyer of our gnana also, one who is destroyer of our vignana. So what is the meaning of gnana? So I have just written so on Saturday also I told, in the beginning, we have teaching, no? We are the mixture of Atma and Anatma. In this whole thing, Atma is the not the part of and product and property of the body. It Atma or consciousness is a separate entity just and leavens the body. Consciousness is not limited by the boundary of the body. Even body dies, Atma survives. In behind mortal body, consciousness survives and I am that consciousness. This is called gnana, information. We are, every day we are taking, it is called indirect knowledge. But if we can assimilate this knowledge, then it is called vigyana. So here what I have put, that need not to go. This is also I've written. Do we see it? Thank you.
Savignanam means after assimilated knowledge, then I can say, if I know very much, I am consciousness only, then we can say, I am Atma. This body is given to me, is a temporary to interact with the world. It is like my instrument. I am not body, mind, sense complex. So body is my instrument. Body means both subtle body and gross body is given instrument to be. I am self-effulgent Atma. This is called a parokshagnan. That nana is called parokshagnan. But even having after the nana, this our karma is good, enough strong to destroy this also. We, we can overpower with karma. That's why Bhagavan says this karma is Pakmana. Even after having knowledge, it can make confuse us. That's why Bhagavan says Prajahi. By giving proper direction to all these three locations, you just give up karma from your mind. You give up karma from your buddhi. You give up karma from senses. Karma and growth are both to give up. So this is called symptomatic relief. So we are just giving symptomatic relief to us. So in medical field, doctors give two types of treatment. One is called symptomatic relief and another is called complete relief. So now in last two verses, Bhagavan is giving how we can come out from this Kama and Krodha complete relief. This sloka Bhagavan is taken from Kathopanishad. More or less, little bit same only. So this I have quoted here. Indriya Bhyav Parahyar Bhava Arthe Bhyascha Param Manaha Manasastu Para Buddhihi Buddhihi Atma Mahan Paraha Mahataha Param Abhyaktam Abhyaktat Purushaf Paraha Purushatna Param Kijit Sa Kashtha Sa Para Buddhi So this shloka Indriya Bhyav Paraha Thaha Bhagavan has taken from Kathopanishad. So like in PhD, no, some people take already others paper. Same way Bhagavan has taken <laughs> mantra from, but this Upanishad is also Bhagavan's gives Bhagavan Samadhi and it is also Bhagavan's. So here he says, Indriyani Parani Ahu Indriyabhya Paramanaha Manasahatu Parabuddhi Yobuddhehe Paratahatu Saha Saha. So here one word is often used. Parani. Here also param. Here also param. And here also parata. So we have to first find out what is the meaning of para. So Shankaracharya is given here. I have just highlighted this. Yes, Shankar has written this. I quoted. What is the meaning of Gnana and what is the meaning of Vignana? So Shankar says in Vashim, Gnana Shastra Taha Acharya Taha Atma Dina Avabuddha. The knowledge regarding Atma and Anatma from where you have heard Acharya Taha from teacher in Shastra Taha. So what we have information are called Gnana. So we all are Gnani. But what is called Vignana? He says, Vignana means Visheshataha Tad Anubhav. If Shastra says you are not body, we should know. Immediately, this body is given, but it seems I am not body. Then it is called Vignana. Says Tayo for both of but without Gnana, Vignanam cannot possible. That's why Shankaracharya says, Tayo, both Gnanam and Vignanam, Gnana Vignana Yoho, Shreya Prapti Hetvo, both can give Moksha. Shreya means for Moksha, this Kama can destroy this. That's why Prajahi, 
you should give up this kama and krodha. In previous verse, because I have just highlighted. So the meaning of para, this I have written, the meaning para means saukshmya. Here is saukshmya is there. Here is antarastha, antarastatva and vyabi. Saukshmya means subtle. Antara means more and more inner, katya. And vyapi means more and more pervasive, is equal to para. So now the comparison, actually para means we can call as a greater, superior. But superior in terms of subtleness, superior in terms of pervasiveness, superior in terms of inner means who is inner to us. So in terms of this, Bhagavan has given this comparison. So he says, first, who are more subtler? So he says, Indriyani, Parani, Ahu. So Indriya are more subtle than what? So here is not written, but we have to put sense objects. Indriya are more superior, superior than sense object because sense object are external, sense object are limited, and sense object are what was third is not pervasiveness. So compared to Indriya are more subtle, more pervasive. Even I am seeing this cloak, I can see this thing also with which are so Indriyas are more subtle. Indriya are more pervasive and Indriya are inner self, more inner to us. That's why compared to sense object, Indriyas are more para superior. Indriya bhyaf para mana. Compared to senses, mind is more superior. We, we will see why, how mind can. But Indriya each and every sense has their own field of object. I cannot hear, ear cannot see. Same, they have their own field, but mind can go in all objects. That's why mind is more subtler. Mind is more pervasive and compared to senses, mind is more inner. Indriya bhyaf paramana. Then who is more subtler than mind? So Bhagavan says, Manasahatu para buddhihi. So buddhihi is more superior than mind. Who means whereas? Here Indriyani, one more thing if you are interested, para is the adjective. Means superior, para is the only one word para. If Indriyani is there, Para becomes parani. If mana comes, para becomes param. If now this par, para shabda is attached with buddhi, it becomes para. Means adjective can be changed according to gender, whatever noun is. So buddhi is more superior than mind because buddhi can take decision, mind, mind cannot take decision. And last one, Bhagavan says, yaha. One who is sitting inside that person, buddhehe parataha. It is even more pervasive, more inner, and more subtle than buddhi. And who is that? Sahatma, that consciousness. And you have to think, you are that consciousness. You are not indriya, you are not mind, and you are not even buddhi. So, having gnanam, we can. Exercise like this. Now, if we see this, so this is the anvaya is given. Indriyani parani ahu Indriya bhyaha manaha param ahu manasahatu para buddhihi in yaha. The Shankaraja is given in his Pashya. Sarva drushya bhyaha. Yaha abhyantara. 
One who is the innermost starts from sin means drishya. Drishya means we can take as an object, then senses, then mind, then buddhi. So one who is the innermost of all this, that saha atma buddhehe parata. He is the super, superior that all this. So here I have called it, this is called Arundhvinaya or Shakha Chantranya. Immediately, Bhagavan cannot say, you are subconscious so that is the superior. Then over Arjuna cannot understand what is the meaning of superior. So one by one, this is the subtler, then this, this is the subtler. Like we say, where is the Arundhati? So you see it more than right side, then again star, same with Shakha Chantranya. Being very subtle, Bhagavan has used this Nyaya, it's called Arundhati Nyaya, and Shakha Chandranaya. So here, Para word has been used by Krishna in meaning of Para, means superior. But superior is in terms of what? The Sukshma, Pratyak, Mahanta. So Sukshma means subtle, Mahanta means more pervasive, more subtle, or more pervasive. Because if avakasha is subtle, that it is more pervasive. But fire is here, its form, it cannot be pervasive. So more subtle and more pervasive, and pratyak means more inner, more closer to me. And here, the gradation is talked about. One by one, Bhagavan says, who is more superior than what? Subtler always control grosser. This I have written here, but this is not going. So subtler, which things are more subtle, always control grosser. So first thing, Indriyani, Parani, Ahu. This Indriya are called subtle. So say sense organs are more superior compared to sense object. Sukshma in terms of sense object are gross. Senses are, senses are subtler than the sense object. Mahanta means each and every sense object are less pervasive. While senses are more pervasive. Pratyak means innermost. So senses Sense objects are external, while senses are inside. So, it's a pratyak. Pratyak means inner. That's why pratyagatma, inner self. Indriyebhya paramana. So, mind is indriyebhya manaha param ahu. So, mind is more superior than mind because sukshma compared to senses. Mind is more subtle as it receives the message, all messages, messages from all five senses. Otherwise, these senses have their own object of it. Mahantam means it's more pervasive. All senses have their own field to get knowledge, but mind can take all five object knowledge. That's why it's more pervasive and inner. Pratyak, compared to senses, mind is more inner. So mind can think anything, mind can go anywhere. That's why it is a more inner, more pervasive. Then he says, manasaha tu parabuddhi. Even our intellect is more superior than mind. And why? So I have written, Mind has two functions. We are full of emotions. And second thing, mind always doubt. Sanshaya Sanshaya Viparyaya. Sanshaya Atma Vinashyati and Sanshaya Viparyaya. What is the definition given in mind in Tattva Bodha? Sanshaya. Hmm. 
हाँ संकल्प विकल्पात्मक संशय मीन्स डाउट इन विकल्प तो समाइम यू नो वेन वी आर गोइंग आउट we know definitely i have given the law but after five steps again if minds our thought comes let me check again i have properly locked or not is called vikalp so mind has quality first is doubt is called sankalpa and then vikalp even before going to bed no it was my tendency i have to check each and every doors are closed and not when i was i hope but after some time again i have doubt let me check i have closed properly or not it is called mind capacity so always is doubt this why buddhi is sukshma compared to mind because it can take decision decision may be right or wrong but it can take decision compared to mind is a full of emotion and doubts this buddhi is more sharp it can this this is and there's a more sharp and pratyak compared to mind it is more inner compared to mind because when we say annamaya pranamaya manomaya fourth one is vigyanamaya so this is more subtle than mind so in kathopanishad this is an imaginary of chariot is given atmanam ratinam vidhi shariram shariram rathame vadu buddhim tu sarathim vidhi manaha pragraham evacha so in that imaginary our body consider as a chariot buddhi consider as a driver while mind consider as a rein so always buddhi can you know while riding even horse or anything buddhi means intellect can control the mind pragraha means ray mind is like a ray so here body is chariot senses are horses mind is a ray intellect is a drive So that's why intellect is more subtle than the mind can take decision. And last one is yaha sarva drushya yaha buddhi ante yaha abhyantara ha saha atma buddhehe parata. We will see tomorrow. हरिगुभ्यो नम हरि any question so easy yeah